Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about React Signals, which is a new thing and it's very exciting. Preact has introduced this and this could change the way we implement state management in our apps. I would leave the choice to you or the thought process to you to tell me what do you think about these signals by the end of this video? Do you think they are better than React, worse than React? Do you also compare this to Zustan, which is also a really nice library for maintaining state and whatnot? So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to start with white, which is a bundler and you could use it instead of Webpack, for example. So we're going to go to get started, scroll down and here we have React. So we can start with React essentially. We could use TypeScript, we could use JavaScript, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to use React here. It opens up this in Stackplit. So we could start with this online or we could just create with npm create white at least this and then we can start with react so instead of the online version i'm going to go to my terminal and then we are going to start from here so i can say npm create white at latest and here we are going to create a new react application so let's proceed with this we are going to call this react signals since we are using signals here and then we are going to pick react for this we are going to pick javascript and there we go now what we need to do is to just open this into vs code so i can do code react signals no not that one react signals and then we are going to just install and run npm run dev and we should be good to go from there you could go to terminal new terminal or just press the hotkey to open the terminal here so we don't have to switch context every now and then so we can run npm install right here and once the packages would be installed we are going to start running the dev server once you have done this you can run npm run dev but you know that we have to install the react signals package as well so uh first we are just going to look into how the app looks like so i'm going to go to the browser and here you can see that this is how the default app from white react looks like so i could click this and you can see that the count variable is being increased every now and then now i'm going to open another terminal and we are going to import the react signals package so this is introduced by the preact team and the signals are basically a way of maintaining a state as I already mentioned and ideally what you would do is that you would import this from the package the signal and then you can create a variable just like this and then you can access the value by doing the variable dot value so you can create any sort of signal here you can create arrays you can create a signal of objects you can create a signal of boolean right here there's a signal of a number and here you can see that we can access the value just like this and in order to update the value of a signal, all you need to do is just to update it simply like this. And then the value would be up to date automatically. What's great about this is that you don't have to use this into class components or uh, function components via hooks, but you can use signals anywhere. So you can use this in any JavaScript file whatsoever. So right now I'm showing you an example from their official documentation in which you create a count signal outside of the function as you can see. So you create it outside. Then what you do is that you basically take the count dot value because this is what you should show on your DOM. So you create it in a variable. You can notice that this is not a use state. So this is just a simple variable. And then you can use it right here just like this. When you do this, you can now just increment it or provide an on-click function to this button which increments it and then essentially you can see that it automatically updates this just like this so what we're going to do is that we have right now an application that comes out of the box from white react so instead of doing this we are going to use the signals to do the same thing and then we are going to switch to a more complex example and we are going to see how that works out so i'm going to go to my project first and now i'm going to do npm install and here we can say preact and then signals dash react now this is important that we use the react version of signals so we have better compatibility and now that we have installed this i'm going to go to my app.js and we are going to use signals rather than this state so you might be already familiar with the standard react state which basically uses a use state hook and you have variable and then to update this state you need to call this function every time so i'm going to take this out from here and now i'm going to do actually i'm going to remove this as well and now i can simply say import from here preact signals react and here i'm going to import the signal so i'm going to say signal here just like this and then semicolon at the end for sure and then at the very top i can create a signal so i can say counter equals to signal zero so we are initiating with the initial value zero and then i need to use the counter dot value so i'm going to just find the instances of it 
and I believe this is not counter but rather count so we have a count variable here so what I can do going forward is when we have to access the value instead of count we are going to use count dot value and then when we have to set the value instead of set count I would just go ahead and do simply count dot value equals to or we could just say count dot value plus plus and that's exactly the same thing now let's try this out so in the browser right now I've refreshed the app and now if I click this you can see that it works exactly the same and if I go and inspect this just to make sure that it's our code that's working always a good idea being a software engineer to check your code and now and now I can simply say app dot jsx and if I open this I can go ahead and just put a breakpoint here here and you can see that this is accessing the value from count value so if I go ahead and click this button you can see that it comes here it takes this count variable and then it has a value 11 right now it increases it so it becomes 12 and when it becomes 12 you would see that this would reflect right then on the UI as well so if I go forward you can see that this is changed to 12 so using signals is as simple as that and if you want you can just leave the video right now because that's the simplest way to explain how to use signals but if you are here for more fun which is to explore a more complex use case keep watching so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Tailwind CSS and I'm going to now have a bit more complex use case here so to install the Tailwind CSS I'm going to go ahead to the documentation and here you can go to uh, tailwindcss.com slash talk slash installation go to framework guidelines since we are using white we are going to go there and then we are going to essentially follow these things so we have already created the project we don't need that we do need to install these packages so we are going to run this command Tailwind CSS, post CSS and auto prefixer are being installed then I'm going to run Tailwind CSS or npx tailwind CSS init p once you run this this is going to create a file here that can be consumed by the editor and also the build process finally I'm gonna go ahead and use this so I'm gonna go to the tailwind CSS config.cjs and update the content property to use index HTML and also to use this now you will notice that here we have this index HTML this is supposed to uh, use or this is supposed to consume Tailwind CSS and also all the JSX or TSX files. Finally, we need to import these things from here. So I'm going to copy this, go to my source index CSS and the very top, we are going to just import this just like this. And then we need to just run npm run dev and we should start using it. So I can, my dev server was already running. So I'm going to just run npm run dev and there we go. So we can go ahead and check our uh, check our application right now you can see that there are some things that are now moved because we are using uh, Tailwind CSS now so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to break things into different different parts so first of all this app JSX is just one component we are going to create two different components we are going to call one header.jsx and the other one should be um, we could call this home.jsx for example and then we would have the style files for them or we are just going to use Tailwind CSS classes for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly copy this without having any shame and I'm going to go to header TSX or JSX and here we did have signal. I'm going to remove the React logo, the app CSS. We don't need a signal here. And then for the header, we are going to just start working with the header itself. We're going to rename this to header and header. And then here we can start with, for example, a header element just like this and here we can say i am a header and then in the app gsx we are going to go and remove everything so also i'm going to remove signal from header gsx in the app gsx i'm going to remove everything from the app class and here we are just going to say something like uh, hey import the header component and that's it so if i save this now you can see that it says i'm a header one more thing that comes out of the box from this white default application is in the app CSS, I believe we have a lot of things like margin zero auto, text align, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to actually remove all of these things, including uh, this and then text align center. I don't think so. Padding, no margin zero auto, uh, maybe margin zero auto. I'm going to just keep it. And now if I refresh, I still see this in the middle for some reason. So let's see why that is. So we have a root style. I don't think that's the reason we should have a body that's why we have so body has this display flags place item center blah 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 I think we need to remove this so that should be in index CSS 
and if I go ahead, I can remove the display flags and there we go. So I think we are good there. We also have some styles for buttons, blah, blah, blah. I don't think really that we need them. So there we go. We have a header there. Now we're going to quickly style these things. So we are going to go ahead and say, first of all, the class name here, the class name can have uh, something like a height if I'm correct. So it should be height for the something. So it has 60. No, I think 24 is something that is about 96. No. So maybe we could do a height 14 here, BG slate, and we can give this 800. The text should be white. The padding X should be something like four, I would say, which is 16 pixels. The padding Y can be three in this case, uh, or two, to be honest. And I believe that should be it. So let's see how this looks. This is how it looks so far. And then what we need to do is to have a display or, or a flex items center so they are centered just like this and then also we have further things inside so in here instead of saying i'm a header we're going to now build the nav so we can say nav and inside the nav here we are going to have a couple of things so first of all we're going to have a simple uh, logo or which says react signals then we're going to have uh, links so we are going to have a ul here and then we're going to have a couple of allies. So uh, we're going to have three allies. So ally into three. And first one is going to have username. Second one is going to be a button. So it's going to be something like login. Third one is going to be logout. So now that we have those, we are going to style them to make sure that they are not being shown like this, but rather in a single line. So this nav is going to have a class name of flex items center. And then you can see that it also should take a uh, full width. So we can say width full. Now that we have this, we are going to give this a justify of between, but not this one rather. So, or actually this one, because this is nav. So it's going to be having a justify between. And you can see that now we have a lot of space here. Then we are going to quickly give this UL also a display flex. So this kind of expands these into one single line. So we can say flex items center. And we can say gap four. So it has some gap in between as well. So here you can see that now they're centered, but if we add gap, they have a really nice gap just like this. Now that we have them for this two allies, we are going to give them some classes to make them buttons. So here we could also say something like uh, padding X equals to three and PY. We could have like 1.5 in this case, and then we can have BG wide text slate 800 in this case so they look something like this as you can see and then also border or we could say rounded because we want to give them a bit of border so rounded uh, sm so you can see that they have a bit of border maybe give md yeah just like this uh, so we have this button right now we also should have cursor pointer so you can see the cursor being changed not on this one but on this one and then we can also add a couple of hover styles as well just to make this pretty so we could say hover here we can give for example hover bg slate so we are going to change the background we are going to also add uh, an outline so hover outline one we could say something like this so if we hover it doesn't show the or we could rather say border to be honest so when we do border, we can say border and here we should have a border white and we can also say this should be border transparent by default. So now if I do this and also border one, I think, or border. So now you can see that by default, it has a transparent border. If I hover, the border color becomes white and we should also change the text color. So the text color or hover should be text white. So we still see the text as you can see. And now we can apply this to both. And also I think we can change that. We can also say transition all and transition 
du or actually duration 300 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds in this case so now you can see that it has a smooth transition right here so now we can apply the same classes to both of them so i can copy this go here class name and then apply just like this so we got two buttons here now what we're going to do is in the header we did that but in home we are going to rename this to home and then here we are only going to have one little one little uh, text so we can say main should have we could have an h3 and here the class name could be text 3 xl and here we could say something like i am log in for example and we should now use this home into app jsx so just below the header we can use home and now you can see it says i'm logged in in home i can also give this some sort of margin so class name can have margin uh let's see margin 16 which is about 64 pixels so we may want to just go to 8 which is about 32 pixel i think this is good so here you can see that we got this uh this message here right so one thing that we have now is i want to show if the user is logged in or not based on these button clicks and we should also show the username so what we are going to do is that we are going to create some computed properties and also some signals as well so some computer signals and, or derived signals and some main signals so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new file i'm going to call this auth signals.js and in here we are going to import the signals so import from and here we have preact signals react let me close this guy and then what we want to do is to import signals and computed from here now what i want to do is to create a to create a signal named user and user is going to be a signal that is going to be null by default now in order to or also this should be export const now i want to create a computed signal which means that i'm going to tell if the user is logged in or not based off of what is in here so if the user is null the user is not logged in if the user has some data then it's logged in so i'm going to call this a computed property so const is logged in equals to and here we can use computed which takes a function and whatever you return from the function becomes the final value for this signal so here i just want to return if the user and remember that in order to access the value of this user i need to say value so if user value exists then we basically say it's a boolean or it's true otherwise false so i'm going to just do double negation here and that's basically it now that we have this uh, computed property here as well i can start using this logged in into my uh, pages so first of all let's talk about this user instead in the header whenever we click a button we should basically go ahead and update this user so one thing that i just realized that it this li should rather be a button so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy all of this class from here and then inside here i'm going to create a button and then i'm going to essentially give that button this class so let's quickly do this so i'm gonna move this button inside just like this and this ally is going to be still here and then finally i can also go ahead and do the same thing here so i'm going to go ahead and cut this guy and then just give a button inside so i could say button and give this class name or actually class name here and then i could simply say log out and finally i can remove this guy from here so now we have two different buttons which are actually buttons i can inspect this and these are the buttons that we are talking about right so now there we go so what i want to do now is to click on these and then update the user so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say something like hey if this button is click so on click i do want to create a call a function and in this function i want to say user which is essentially imported from the signal so import or import from and here we have auth signals so in here i could simply say something like user and this is being ex exported from there so user dot value and when we are logging in i would just change it to for example first name 
Essen. And then we could say last name Ayaz. And we can also use Muhammad here. So Muhammad Essen Ayaz. And then we got email and Essen at something.com. Something.com. So we can change this. And then finally, what we can do is if we do the same with the logout button, we could say on click equals. And here we could say something like this. So user dot value equals to null. So we have now set the values of these signals via click functions, but how do we access them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my home JSX and I'm going to import the signals there as well, but I'm not going to import the user signal, but rather is logged in signal. And in here, I'm going to say something like this. So if I'm logged in, I show a different message. And if I am not logged in, I show a different message for simplicity. I'm going to keep two different messages. So if is logged in is dot value is there, I'm going to say I am logged in else I'm going to say I am not logged in. So I'm going to remove this now. And if I go here, you can see that it says I'm not logged in. If I click the login button, it says I'm logged in. Yay. So that means that it is changing the value directly. So if I say log out, not logged in, logged in. So our signals are working perfectly here. And this is coming from the computed property. So if you want to go ahead and you can look into the sources and here, if I go to auth signals, I can put a breakpoint right here and you will notice as soon as I go ahead and say login, it comes inside here. It checks the user's value, which is now all of this, the data. And then it obviously since this exists, it's going to return true. If you go back to home JSX and you can put a value here as well, you will notice that it would obviously re-render. And now the is logged in value is true in this case. So this looks okay. If I do log out, it goes ahead, checks the user's value is null, returns a false in there, comes back to the component and now the value is false. So this is going to change to I am not logged in. You can see that this breakpoint uh, comes twice because React does it twice in the development mode, but on production, it just does this once. So now that we have this, let's also talk about using the same logged in value to show either of these buttons instead of both of them. So you could go to header.js and here you could put there this ally here. So rather than this, I would just go ahead and copy all of this. And then I can simply say is logged in dot value if that exists then we show the one that is supposed to be log out or we could just reverse it so if it's not is logged in dot value then we show the login button otherwise we show the other one so i'm gonna quickly format this as well so format document and there we go so now that we have formatted this let's see so if i'm not logged in it shows the login button if I'm logged in, it shows the logout button. Yay. Now, finally, I need to take care of this username. So one more thing that we would do is we are going to create another signal, but this time we are not creating it uh, anywhere. We're just creating it in the component that needs it. But still based off of these auth signals, you are you're noticing that we don't have to use any hooks here because these are functional components. Similarly, if you had class components, it would be exactly be the same. You can work with signals anywhere apart from just being in the components as well. So from the auth signals, what I'm going to do is in this home component or actually in the header where I need to display the username, I could go ahead and create a computed property right here. I could say const display or user display name equals, and here we could say computed. So you're going to import computed from signals. And here you could say something like, Hey, I am going to say return. If user itself has a value. So if the user value exists, then we need to return a string that contains the user value. So we are going to say user dot value dot first name, and then also user dot value dot last name. Otherwise, if that's not the case, we return a null value here and see how, how clean this is. This is a computed value and in your component, all you need to do is just this. So you're going to the user display name, but this is a signal. So you need to use the value property. So here it would now show or hide this based on if you're logged in or not. 
So if I refresh this now, you can see that if I'm not logged in, it doesn't show at all. But if I do log in, you can see that the value comes in. So this is a computed property which is local to the component itself, but it takes the value or it is derived from a global signal. So you can do amazing stuff with that, not just within the component, but you can also make your services like this file. You can create a service which depends on a signal and then it updates its values based off of the information. Imagine, for example, you could build a to-do application, a very weird example, but you could have tons of work being done there. For example, if you mark one little uh, to do there, you could have a computed value that says how many of them have been completed or how many have not been completed. And that would only, only run, that computed value would only run when you update the original signal on which they depend, which highly increases the performance because you're not doing it every time. You're only doing it when you update the value of a particular signal. And that is very performant when it comes to maintaining the state. And I, I personally like this approach. This is something that I saw first in SolidJS, but I think that React uh, it has it now. So maybe this is going to be adopted widely. Having said that, that's actually what I wanted to share today on how to use signals and how to use them in a complex example. What I also went ahead with this video is also to teach you some of the Tailwind magic that you could do, how to work with Tailwind, how to add those classes and how to create buttons, for example, really quickly. So I hope this was very helpful for you. If you found this useful, let me know in the comments. Let me know which is your favorite state management library in the comments. And then let's have a talk about what should we use in our next project. If you have something in mind that I should cover in my next videos, do let me know in the comments as well. As always, take care of yourself, take care of your families, and I'm going to see you in the next video.